Hi, and welcome back to the Save It For Parts channel. We're down here yet again in the Sandland Tunnels, about to do some more digging in the sandbar. We're going to be taking down our decoration there and extending the tunnel a little bit farther. Now, every time I come down here, I comment that Sandland is getting bigger and bigger. The tunnels are getting more and more extensive. I'm just one of many volunteers, and I focus mainly on the sandbar here, but other folks have been digging all kinds of crazy stuff around the Sandland Underground. Um, it's getting so big, in fact, I couldn't find the other people who are out here today. I came out here, there's already cars out here, there's already uh, gear at the shed, there are obviously people in the tunnels, but I've just run through most of the tunnels and I haven't found them. So that's just how big Sandland is getting. You can actually lose another group in the underground now. So I'm going to go around and look some more. We're going to show you what some of the other projects are underground and some of the other progress has been happening. And then we're going to come back here and do a couple other things on the sandbar. So in one of the other side drifts off the donut room, we have this interesting project here. I don't know how well this is going to show up. Those are fun. I don't know who put those up. I don't know how well this will show up on the camera because it's a very tight space, but this is actually a spiral stairway that's starting to go up. And this is going to go up to some upper levels. Like I said, it's pretty tight. I have to stoop down to get around this stairway, and it's obviously not finished yet. And then Dave has been really expanding his labyrinth of spheres. So each of these little rooms is kind of a spherical or egg shape. And they just go all over the place. I get lost in here now. This is just, it goes up, it goes down, it goes around the corner. There's junctions, there's intersections. And Dave is still working down in here. Or should I say up, because now I'm going up. Oh, that goes back down. And uh, he's actually, yeah, that just keeps on going up there. Um, he's gotten so far in here that they've actually had to make this little bypass chute. So this is just a little slot, not human size, that goes down to another tunnel. And this is a shortcut to dump sand down. So we'll see if we can find that from the other side. Yeah, again, this goes down in multiple directions. This is one of my favorite parts of the Sandland Tunnels. I think this is much cooler than the crawl maze. I think it might even be cooler than my bar. So if we go around through here, yeah, there's the bottom of that chute. So that's where the sand comes out, gets dumped out down here to be hauled out. And then Dave is also working on this other upward sloping tunnel. I won't try to crawl up there right now because I'll have to crawl over all this sand and I don't want to mess it up too much. And I think the plan is to cross over this tunnel which goes out to the third adit. So at some point, uh, it'll cross overhead here, may loop around, maybe connect up to the spiral stairway. The bearings have started to go on some of these wagons, and we have a couple volunteers who have been helping replace the bearings. We've looked into bigger wagons, we've looked into power wagons, uh, we've reinforced a lot of stuff, as you can see there, but uh, yeah, these wagons get a lot of hard use. They are definitely overloaded on a regular basis. We put too much sand in them. We vastly overwhelm the capacity of these in the name of what some people think is efficiency. I tend to think it's just making us buy more wagons, but uh, yeah, it's, it's an ongoing experiment with that. So not everyone goes down all of the donut room side drifts because they don't all go somewhere yet. And another project I've been experimenting with is the Sandland Catacomb. So we've got a ton of these plastic skulls. I just keep uh, finding these on Amazon and auctions and whatnot. And I even made this little laser engraved catacomb sign. And uh, yeah, we've got a little bust of a face there. We've got all kinds of stuff going on. So I'm going to add to that a little bit today. We have this trash can here, which is actually an old Union Carbide can. So this is what calcium carbide would have come in in the old days of mining. And I will show you what we use calcium carbide for. Now, my videos are all out of order, but in another video, I was playing around with restoring some of these carbide miner's lamps. So this uses calcium carbide mineral, or I guess it's an artificial mineral, and then water in the top, and that drips down onto the carbide. The chemical reaction forms acetylene gas, which comes out the nozzle here, and we light that, and we've got a really nice, very uh, good-looking light. So I'm going to spark that up and just show you what that looks like in the actual tunnels. So we have our carbide rocks in there. I had to replace the gasket with some rubber bands. It seems to work well enough. Put a little water in the top, and this lever starts dripping the water down into the carbide. 
I can actually see a little bit of gas uh, coming out of the nozzle here. It's shooting out quite a ways. I don't know if that shows up on camera. I'm going to use the striker here to try to ignite that without uh, igniting my entire hand. There we go. This is just lit with the carbide lamp. Very bright, um, very warm. I really like the quality of light that this puts out. I think it's much more inviting than an electric light, than an LED light. It's um, yeah, it's really cool. It's, it's got some directionality to it. You can see there's a little spot where this reflector on the front directs the beam, but there's also a lot of ambient light all the way around that big flame. So it does a really good job at lighting up the area, plus letting you uh, look down distant tunnels like this. So this really is a great design for mining. Uh, it gives you a great view of your work area. I probably won't be using this for actual mine work down here because we do have modern lights. Uh, this thing, you do need to feed it water, you need to feed it carbide, you need to babysit it a little bit, and then um, open flames underground in a mine like this, probably just fine. We don't have any bad air, we don't have any explosive gases in here. This is just a sandstone mine. The worst air quality issue down here is the actual sandstone. If you breathe this stuff in, you can get silicosis, you can uh, damage your lungs just like smoking. So when we're digging the sandstone out, we wear respirators, but Again, there's no methane, uh, there's no coal dust, there's no real problematic gases, and an open flame is just fine. However, that being said, don't generally want a bunch of flame underground in an enclosed space. It does use up a little bit of the oxygen. It can be a fire hazard if this tips over on something flammable in here. Uh, if the carbide leaks out where it's not supposed to, you can have an exciting little poof. I mentioned the catacomb project. I also brought down today this bucket of bones. This was a, I think, pretty complete uh, human analog skeleton, uh, all made out of plastic. Can't afford a real skeleton, but uh, yeah, this was from one of those scam colleges that went out of business a few years back, and um, it's pretty cool. It's got a very nice skull. It's actually hinged on top, so the, uh, the top of the skull opens up. We've hidden that with a uh, headlamp here, so apparently this is the skull of another explorer. But yeah, we've got uh, almost everything here. So I had this sitting around at home and it was just in this bin. It wasn't really doing anything for the home decor. I thought about trying to assemble it as one of those freestanding skeletons, but it's actually not drilled for any articulation. There's no pins, there's no wires. It's all just loose bones. So uh, it doesn't really work for one of those stand-up guys in the corner, but it will work great for throwing in a pile down in the catacomb and adding to the Sandland uh, Paris decor. So there we go, a little bit of Paris right here in Wisconsin. Now we can always use more bones, so if you'd like to donate your skeleton or someone else's skeleton to Sandland to improve our catacomb, contact me today. Back here in the sandbar, we've had ongoing issues with this LED light strip. Uh, it doesn't appear to be very waterproof. It's supposed to be, but there are these junction points like uh, right here that seem to go out. So. Uh, for whatever reason, this doesn't work very reliably down here. I think especially the little control box, like, burns out or gets water in it. It's 100% humidity down here, as I say in every video, and it just is murder on electronics. So, we're taking down the old LED rope light, and I've got some new ones that are supposed to be completely waterproof. They're supposed to be for your boat. So, we're going to see how long those last and if the waterproof claim holds up. Yet another project, and somehow when you have a homemade DIY underground tunnel system, there are just infinite projects. I've been working on this little in-wall train system, which is supposed to snake around back behind, eventually have a full loop, but it's kind of ongoing. Uh, instead of actually working on the structure and uh, setup of that, we're doing more decoration. So I've got a tube of dinosaurs, I've got some 3D printed little fantasy D&D uh, &D figures, miners and whatnot. So we're going to set those guys up on the train track and eventually I'm going to work on this more, but uh, that's for another video. All right, got my little 3D printed D&D &D miners. Huh. Give them some dragon friends. Okay, we've got our new lights strung up. Maybe I need to double check that power. All right, we got it. The 12 volt adapter that I was using from the old light string was also dead, as well as those lights. Um, this new one came with just a battery adapter, just a 12 volt lighter plug, because it's for a boat. Um, I found a 10 volt adapter that I had down here. Yes, even at Sandland, I have random, vaguely useful power supplies just hoarded away in tunnels. So um, that was close enough. 10 volts works, and we can do. Uh, Let's see. Yeah, we can do all of our 
regular LED colors here, so that's kind of fun. Um, we can make this brighter, dimmer, white light, we can set timers, we can set different patterns, uh, we can have a disco rave party down here. Maybe. I might have just overloaded that 10 volt circuit. We're going to have to bring down a bit different power supply for it, but uh, at least it's working for now. Well, that's probably more than enough screwing around with random bar projects. I'm going to get suited up, get my safety gear on, and start digging. I think I may have finally killed another one of these drills. Um, this is number three. This is the third drill I bought, and uh, it's the second or third that started to develop problems. It no longer has any hammering action, so when you hold it against the rock, it just kind of vibrates. So there's something screwed up in here. As I've mentioned before, these drills are like $90. These things, um, they're basically disposable, and this one has lasted me a good two, three years. So uh, even if it's completely dead, I'm going to say, yeah, that was, that was worth $90, and I'm going to buy more of these. I'll throw a link down in the description to uh, where I find some of these guys. Oddly enough, my number one drill is still going strong. This is the very first uh, one of these that I bought, the Extreme Power US, and uh, this one has seen all kinds of abuse. I have chiseled through the power cord, I've replaced the power cord, I've opened it up, I've replaced parts in here, I've cleaned it out, and knock on wood, it's the one that's working the best so far. To make at least some attempt at keeping things uh, flat, I've gotten a laser level, so we're going to fire that across the floor, and if we've got any high spots, we'll just chew those down with the chisel, make sure everything's at uh, about the same level. We would have to scrape away all the sand to get a perfectly level surface. We're at the same level down at the end of the tunnel, so yeah, we haven't drifted too much up or down. This thing is also starting to smell like a flaming porta potty. Uh, even through the respirator, I can smell it, and I don't know if all this uh, fog in the air is just sandstone dust or smoke from this thing giving up its life. I did put the uh, fine mesh 100 micron screen on it to try to keep the sand out of the workings, but it uh, turns out angle grinders aren't meant for industrial mining. Who knew? Uh, you can see my approach here. I cut out a grid uh, with the angle grinder, and then I go in with the uh, hammer drill chisel and smash out all those pieces. So I do that a couple times and we get about a foot of more tunnel progress in an eight hour day. My ear protection here keeps flopping loose too. It's supposed to be clipped onto the hard hat here. I had some duct tape over it and that's fallen off too. Yeah, this tunnel mining stuff is really hard on equipment. Okay, so hauling the sand out is still the biggest, hardest part of this, and this stupid corner continues to be a problem. Every time I go around this, my cart tries to tip over, and uh, yeah, I lose a load of sand probably on one out of three trips out of here. So this is a hugely inefficient and problematic corner. So some folks in the comments have asked, why don't we dig the way Colin Furs does, or Kala on TikTok, or some of the other uh, tunnel people who are out there on social media digging their own tunnels. Well, here at Sandland, we're a little bit different than Colin Furs, than some of these other folks. We've got Jordan Sandstone, which is a compressed sand, uh, ancient fossilized sand, beach sand, turned into a rock. So to get through that, we have to have impact hammers that smash away at it, turn it back into sand from stone, and let us chisel it out here. Colin Furs has something more like loose limestone bedrock, so he can kind of push at it with a hydraulic pusher thing and smash it out that way. And yes, I'm a big Colin Furs fan. I really like his videos. I watch all of his tunnel stuff. Sandland was recently in a Bloomberg News article about hobby tunneling alongside Colin Furs and uh, Kala from TikTok and some of those other folks. So if you want to read about our weird tunneling obsession, I will put the link to Bloomberg down below and you can hear why we're all basically just drug addicts according to some tunnel industry guy that nobody's ever heard of. All right, so let's go directly from Sandland back to my home garage. Now you're questioning if Sandland even really exists. I just wanted an excuse to use the green screen for a transition. I always forget I have this stupid thing in the garage. Well, we're back down here once again. It is a new week, new weekend. 
trying to do more tunnel digging, it is getting a little tedious, I think, to just show endless clips of me digging a hole because I'm pretty much digging the same method every time. Nobody wants to see a 10 minute montage of me chipping away at the wall. You've, you've all seen that in other videos. So I'm gonna try to come up with other things I can show around the tunnel digging project here. And then we can just, you know, come up with enough random content to spew out a video. Now I have brought down some new safety equipment. We've got that in our safety orange bag here, which I actually found in a dumpster and it's been working pretty well for Sandland stuff. So I bought some new P100 gas mask cartridges or respirator cartridges. These are really vital when you're digging sandstone like this. Sandstone uh, and especially the sand that it turns into is pretty abrasive and you do not want to get this stuff in your lungs. When you're digging, when you're stirring it up, it gets into the air, it gets a lot of dust. When there's no active mining going on, it all settles out to the ground and it's not really a problem just walking around. It doesn't get stirred up too much. We have 100% humidity down here, as I say in almost every video, and that really helps keep the dust down. So uh, it's not really a breathing hazard just to explore a sandstone tunnel, just to walk around in a sandstone cave, but when you're smashing away at the wall with a jackhammer, then you want a P100 respirator, and this is a really critical piece of digging safety gear. A uh, couple respirators here. I actually have two that I switch between. We've got the full face respirator that I use when I'm uh, angle grinding because that uh, angle grinder is frankly terrifying and I don't want that blade to break, I don't want it to catch a piece of sand and fling it into my face, so that's when we use the full face job here. It's getting pretty scratched up, it's getting really hard to see through this, so I might have to retire that soon. And then I also have my little half face respirator, which I use when I'm using the demolition hammer, the chipping hammer. It's getting close to time to retire this as well. The straps are starting to wear out. We've used this for a while, so I'm gonna throw it out and probably get a new one next time. I have these anti-vibration gloves. I don't know how much of a gimmick they really are, but they definitely have extra knuckle and back of the hand protection, which is great if you're smashing away at something with a hammer or power tool. If you smash into the back of your hand or into your knuckles, these things with the rubber all over them are great. So we've got a couple lights that I use for close-up work. I'm pretty sure I've shown off my helmet before. I have the uh, Bluetooth ear protection so I can listen to music. I have the chainsaw face shield. I'm thinking of swapping that for the clear one here. Um, got my lunch. Got a big light so if I want to focus in on a work area, I can do that. And yeah, that's about it for the moment. That is the regular gear that I bring down here. Now there's been some major work going on in other parts of the tunnels. I find it a little bit easier to film when there's not other people down here working because these tunnels are a little cramped. If everybody's down here hauling sand and digging and running equipment, it's actually pretty hard to film all that. And we do have quite a bit of new progress in certain parts of the tunnels, especially over here in Dave's globe maze. Yeah, it just keeps going up and up here. This is probably the highest we've really gone in the sandstone layer. Way, way up here. And uh, yeah, this is really cool. Just uh, pops up another level here. A little ledge of harder material. It turns into kind of a crawl. I'm not super excited about crawls. My knees hurt, my back hurts, but I've heard that it's kind of fun down here. I remember we went way, way up. Now we can go way, way, way down. This is a really steep staircase here, and I think eventually this is gonna be a slide. Now we've still been largely using the wagons and buckets to haul the excavated sand out to the surface, but as I may have mentioned before, we're experimenting with some suction haulage, some, I guess, pneumatic conveyor system. So this hose is intended to hook up to a big shot vac dust collector contraption and suck the sand right out of the tunnels. So I have not seen this particular one work yet. I have tried similar schemes in the past. I have not gotten them to work because my shot vac wasn't powerful enough or my understanding of uh, pneumatic conveyance was not strong enough, but uh, maybe this one will work. I don't know, we'll have to come out here when the inventor of this particular system is, uh, in, uh, is on site and can give us a demonstration. People sometimes ask, why does the donut room have this corrugated ceiling? Is it unstable? Is it uh, holding up the ceiling? Mostly it's here for decoration. We actually have one spot in the ceiling that has kind of a crack or crevice and 
it's not so much dangerous as it is kind of ugly, and it's kind of uh, distinctive. The owner and inventor of Sandland has this idea that he wants the entire donut room to look the same. He wants people to be able to walk around here and not know where they are, not know which of these offshoots goes to what. I'm just going to pick one randomly here, and oh look, it's my catacomb again. I, I honestly didn't know where I was, so yeah, I randomly went down one, found my little plastic bone collection. So that is part of the fun of Sandland, is that you're going around and around this identical loop with all these offshoots that look identical, and once the trash cans and some of the work stuff is removed, you won't know which loop goes where, you won't know where you are, if you had a big ugly crack in the ceiling like this, that would kind of give it away. You'd, you'd kind of be able to base off of this crack of where you were. You'd know, well, the cracks here, this tunnel goes to such and such location, and we've hidden it, or started to hide it, with this corrugated metal, and then hidden the rest of the ceiling with corrugated metal as well. Okay, I said we were going to look at some more LED lights, and I actually got these uh, scan grip line lights from a viewer, so thank you, Jason. Unfortunately, I ran out of time today, so I don't have time to install these. I was going to throw them in our uh, upper attic here because we've lost some of the LED lights that light up the tunnel, and you can see there's a strip that just died there. I'm, I was planning on installing these there. There's been a little bit of question about that. I talked to some of the other volunteers. I talked to the guy that installed the original LED lights here, and we're not 100% sure if we want to put them here in this incline tunnel or if we want to put them somewhere else. And then I got so distracted with digging and doing other projects that it's time to go home and I have not gotten around to the line lights here. So sorry, Jason. Um, we'll try to get to these in another video. Maybe we'll do a review or maybe we'll install them here and then just uh, leave them in for a while. See how they do. They're supposed to be um, IP65 or whatever the waterproof uh, international standard is. So hopefully they'll work underground long term. They're supposed to be really expensive, really high-end lights, and I'm looking forward to trying them, but that's going to have to wait for another video. So if you want to see that, stay tuned and we'll see what happens with it. Now before we wrap this video up, I do have one other exciting piece of news, which I've probably mentioned in a couple other videos. I will be exhibiting at Open Sauce 2024 out in San Francisco, June 15th and 16th, and that is a big YouTuber convention. All kinds of cool people will be out there. There will be some other tunnel hobbyists. There will be all kinds of projects, robots, science. Uh, it'll be nuts. So I'm really looking forward to it. I will not be specifically exhibiting about Sandland or about tunnels. I'll be working on one of my other projects for satellite uh, experiments and radio astronomy, which is kind of related to Sandland because we're planning on doing a bigger radio telescope out here. I might sneak a couple Sandland brochures onto my booth or onto my table there at Open Sauce. So if you're going to Open Sauce, if you're in San Francisco, uh, go to the convention, come on by, say hello, grab a Sandland brochure, grab a free sticker uh, while they last, and uh, it'll be a lot of fun. So I'm looking forward to seeing some of my viewers there, and I'm really excited about it. Other than that, I think I'm basically done with this video. I've got enough random filler material to uh, publish this, so... Yeah, I've been a little bit all over the place here. I think we might be titling this something about a catacomb because one of my bigger projects was getting that uh, catacomb set up with all the plastic skeleton and skull parts. Just cool decor down here in the tunnels and then another aspect of our underground uh, secret tunnel system. So stay tuned for m more expansion of the sandbar, more expansion of other sandland tunnels, more nonsense with the monorail, the radio telescope, the geodesic dome, all of that stuff. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.